One really great feature in FL Studio is its quick renaming function. And it's completely customizable. Hi. In FL Studio, there are two easy methods to open the renaming field. Selecting something and hitting F2 or just shift-clicking the part you want to rename. Just with clips in the picker panel, one has to be careful with the latter method. Only shift-clicking an already selected clip opens the renaming field. Shift-clicking a different clip than the actual selected extends the selection. So one needs first to select a clip and then shift-click the same one to rename it. Of course, you can use as well the right-click menu to reach the same. But I find the first two ways much faster and easier. Once open, there are several options to choose from. You can do everything manually, typing in a name, choosing a color or an icon, but I prefer the second way. There's another triangle called Presets, which provides an already big selection to choose from. Clicking on one of these entries does everything of the previous mentioned with a single click. I got a name, a color and an icon for my selection. And if you, for example, hold Alt while making an instrument track, it's all done in one go. For the track, the pattern, the mixer channel, and the generator. That's all good and well. But what if you're working with a fixed color scheme by default? For example, I like my kick always be in red and my percussions in blue. For me, there are many entries which I probably will never need and others which are lacking. No problem. All these presets are stored in a simple text file and can be edited to your liking. You find them in your FL Studio installation folder under System Config. And they are even named properly that everybody can have an idea what they do. Name presets seems logical. Underscore and what they are for. We find a file for the channel rack, mixer slots to quick rename plugins in the mixer, mixer tracks, patterns and playlist tracks. It's not a good idea to change anything directly here, as these files are part of the installation process and will be overwritten by installing an update. For that, we have our user library. I select the files and copy them into the clipboard. Navigate to my user library, FL Studio, into Settings instead of System like we had before, and open the folder Lists. Here we can paste the copied files and edit them to our liking. Opening one looks a bit confusing at first glance, but it's actually a very simple syntax. We have first the wished name, followed by the defined color and the number for the icon. So let's see how this all behaves. The files in this folder overtake the function of the originals. Whenever you open the preset menu in the renaming field, FL Studio looks first into this place if it finds the corresponding text files. Only if it isn't present here, it will take the originals of the installation folder. For example, I open the file for the playlist tracks and delete everything in here. I save the file and if I am right, the preset menu of the renaming field should be empty what it is. If I now delete this file and open the menu again, all of the entries are back. As there was no file present in the user library, FL Studio took the entries from the original file. Let's undo the deletion and have a look what we can do to customize our own presets. It's perhaps a bit nerdy to edit some text file entries. But as you have already seen, at least the changes are immediately reflected in the menu after saving the file. This way I can test directly how my changes look like. First a function which isn't even present in the originals. You can define categories for your presets. I like to have a category for kick and bass. 
I simply put in minus or hyphen, space, kick and bass and hit enter. My next category is percussion high. That's why I put in all my hi-hats, claps and so on. Followed by percussion low for percussion stuff which got more body than high frequency content. And continue with the others. I save the file and have a look in Effort Studio. All of these entries have now a lighter underlay than the presets we got before. Let's make this a bit more obvious by putting in an empty line in between. Now it's a bit better to see. My categories are done now. Let's fill them up. The kick and bass section of course needs a kick, comma, and now we need to choose a color. Here it gets a bit tricky, as these text files need color codes in Delphi. But even the new color picker shows just the HTML values. Entering the wrong values into the file result in black color. So every time you get black instead of the wished one, you can be sure you saved the value in a wrong format or with the wrong syntax. But here's a nice website offering the correct values for tons of different colors. I put the link in the description. I like my kick in a bright red color. I copy this value here and replace my wrong HTML one. Make sure there is no space after the color value. I save the file again. Et voila! A nice red for my kick. Please be careful with the colors you choose. If they are for example too bright, it can happen that FL Studio changes the font color for the labels to black. Which looks a bit silly if black and white text is mixed in the same project. At least to me it does. You already saw me typing in another comma, followed by a zero. The last value is the number for the icon. There is no official documentation, but I found an old forum thread about this topic. Here some nice people have figured out which number stands for which icon. And offer too some nice presets in the text boxes, which you can simply copy over if you like. I put the link to this thread as well in the description. And this is something you should definitely bookmark as well as the color site. I chose zero as icon, which stands for the X or reset one. Means no icon at all. For my kick, I could of course put in the matching one. Number five. I override these files now by the ones I usually use. And this is what they look like. I don't use icons, but that's just me. This all seems to be a lot of work, but first, it's time well spent. It's the quickest way to name your stuff properly and to commit to a certain color and naming scheme you can work best with. Once done, it stays forever. You don't have to do this all over and over again for each single file. Normally, you want to have the same or at least nearly the same naming, colors and icons for playlist tracks, generators, mixer tracks and clips. So if you have finished one, you can simply copy over the content to the others and just make perhaps little changes to your liking there. And the presets for the FX slots in the mixer I find already quite useful by default. If you need nearly the same naming like I do, I put my files into a zip which you can download from my topic in the Loop Talk forum. The link is in the description as well. You can use my files as starting point and edit them further to your needs. Enjoy making your own quick renaming presets or better enjoy renaming your entries faster by using them. And thank you for watching.